We're here at Cold Creek today, and I'm gonna do a little jug fishing and do a little bit of bow fishing. I don't know. It's actually a little bit clearer than I thought. Mainly, I want to do a little recon on bow fishing before I took my new boat out. So we'll see what we can do. But first, we need some bait. Little common carp, not exactly what I was wanting, but might have to work. Caught somebody's Ozark trail shades. And I put 10 jugs out. I don't have a whole lot of confidence in it, to be honest with you. Uh, this is the time of the spawn in Tennessee. So if I catch one or two, it'll be a good day, at least on that set. And I really don't know if I have time for two sets. Uh, I'm running behind. I wish I could have got here about 30 minutes earlier. It really depends on what I want to do. If I want to do a catch and cook, I'm going to have to leave here probably around 11.30. And I put them jugs out. The last one I set was 9.45. And I like to let them set for at least an hour. But since I'm kind of running late today, that's a big gar right there. It wouldn't run in my mouth on camera. I could have been ready and might have popped a shot at him. I'm going to let them sit for, I guess, 45 minutes. I'll check them at about 10.30. See what it looks like. If I catch one or two on that set, I might do another quick set somewhere. And right now, while they're sitting, I'm going to just kind of let the wind drift me. And... See what I can see. Uh, I'd like to shoot a couple carp or maybe a gar. If I shoot a gar, I'm going to take him home too and either use him as cut him up for bait or I might do a catch and cook with him. I, I've been wanting to do some stuff with gar, uh, some new recipes, try it out. But that's what I'm doing right now. Kind of drift through here, down through this creek and see what I can see. If I start seeing a bunch of fish, I'm going to go ahead and get ready. I might set the camera up, try to do a little bow fishing until it's ready to pick them jugs up. Check these jugs. This one up here got something on it. I see it. See if we can sneak up on it. Might be a gar. I got half of these baited with chicken liver and the other half with cut pieces of carp so could be anything on it Ain't little. It's a grinnel. <laughs> a big grinnel. Oh my gosh. Woo Man, he's mad too. How about a how about a grinnel catching cook? fire up the live well. That's a big old grinnel. I want to weigh him. Need some fish grips to get a hold of him. How about that? Woo! That's a big old grinnel. Let's put him on a scale real quick. Man, I thought he's bigger than that. Oh, never mind. I'm on kilogram somehow. There we go. Oh yeah. 
That's a little more like it. Ten and a half. If that'll show up or not. That's the biggest grill I ever caught. I usually don't catch them on jugs though. I have before. Shoot, let's put him in a live wheel. Maybe we can add something to it. This one got a fish on. channel cat Ain't nothing right home about but he's eating size let's throw him in there too a couple raindrops hit me if it starts raining too much I'm gonna put the camera up put the camera up whoo <laughs> that was a little sketchy it come a downpour when I turn right after I turn the camera off you could see it coming down the slough but uh I got the other three jugs up and wasn't nothing on them uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to mess this camera up I got a bad track record with cameras and this camera I'm using now they got wasp in here Actually, it's a dirt dauber. There he goes. I got a. Anyhow, I got a pretty, pretty bad track record with cameras and water, so I don't want to mess this one up. It's not a cheap camera, but it's a little bit earlier, and of course the sun's shining now. The sun was shining when it was raining. I've heard different stories about that or sayings. I've heard if it rains when it's the sun shining, it means it's going to rain the next day. And I've also heard that there's an old saying. If it's raining when the sun shines, means the devil's beating his wife. So, either way, and they're calling for some more rain today, so I decided to get on out of there and load up. It's 11 o'clock, a little earlier than I wanted to leave, but probably working my favor since I got a couple fish to clean and try to cook up. I got a little work ahead of me and about 50 minute drive to get home. So, let's uh, head to the house. I'll see you there. I'm gonna try to do this as fast as fast as possible because it's trying to rain and I'm sorry for the noise my neighbor cuts his grass every freaking day cleaning grinnell these fish these fish got a bad reputation I don't understand why supposedly you catch a grinnell you need to cook it and clean it that day I don't know they say that if you try to freeze it when you thaw it out the meat breaks down and turns to mush I, I haven't tried that I don't know uh, I don't want to risk it, so I'm going to believe the old wise tale or, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just don't want to risk it. So, uh, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and clean it. I'm going to do one side, show you how to do it. You, I fillet them just like I fillet a bass. That's a giant strip of meat on these fish. I hope I can do it before this rain starts. But you're going to want to whack these guys in the head before you start cleaning them. You want to keep them alive until you clean them. Uh, I wouldn't try to put them on ice. It might start breaking the meat down if they start dying. So keep them alive until you're ready to clean them. Before you clean them, give them a good old whack on the head with a hammer because they, uh, Grendel don't know when to give up. They don't give up after you land them in the boat and you don't want them trying to flop around and trying to clean them. Plus, I guess it's the humane thing to do. Go ahead and kill the fish before you start filleting meat off its body. But that's what I'm gonna do now. Whack him in the head, fillet this dude up. All right, I'm gonna do this dude on my tailgate because I am in a hurry, like I said.
This is a big old female. She's still got eggs in her. Kind of late in the season for Grendel to have eggs, but. All right, so you got a rib cage from here to here. And that's it. I got a little skin on here, but that's one solid boneless fillet. Now granted, this is a big old grinnel, but still, that's a lot of freaking meat. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, and do the other side, and then uh, get some grease ready. I'll get this camera out of the rain. I don't wanna mess it up. All right, so I got this grinnel all cleaned up. Just so you guys know, what I did was uh, if it had any dark red meat or anything that looked kind of not very appetizing, like some the center line kind of has some white membrane or something. I don't really know what to call it. Gristle is what it really looks like. I cut it out, cut any kind of red stuff out to where you're left with just clean fillets, and I cut it all into chunks. And I started out with some Zatarain's fish fry, but I know I don't have enough, so I added a little bit of uh, flour, cornmeal, and garlic powder, salt, pepper, and a little bit of spices to it. Just, just use whatever you usually use for a fish fry. So what I'm gonna do is put these fillets in my bag, toss it all up, and put it in the oil. All right, I'm doing this outside because fish don't fry in the kitchen. All right, so I got my big bag of grinnel here. I got it all massaged in. And I'm gonna add it to my oil. My oil is really too hot. It should be 350, but it's up to 450 right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and add a few pieces, and bring it on down. You just start out with 10 pieces. Let that oil kind of cool down a little bit. These might be get a little burnt. These are a little dark. And my oil was too hot. They might still be alright though. And see these come out a lot better. Look at that. With some good eating right there, I'm telling you. I do want to show you guys. And you open it up, it, it don't look like regular fish, but don't let that mess it up for you. Watch this. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but it's not just flaky white fish. It's almost kind of gray looking. So, it could be off-putting to some people, but I'm telling you, give it a try. It almost looks like it would be mealy or something but it's not it's really really soft textured fish i've had this is the third time i've cooked grinnell first time i did a beer batter the last time i cooked it i soaked it in buttermilk this time i all i did was rinse it off put it in that colander let it kind of drain the water off and then put it right in the just a dry batter so this is more of a true taste test than any other times i've ever had it Now, I always get flack when I tell people that Grinnell tastes good. A lot of people just say that they heard it tastes bad, but there's always that one or two people that say that it, it tastes muddy or it's gross. I have no idea where you people come up with that. You're either lying because you never tried it, or you don't know anything about cooking fish, or your Uncle Bubba cooked it for you and let the fish die and just screw the whole thing up because i'm telling you this is the best fish in fresh water i'm gonna bring this to work tonight for the guys i ain't gonna tell them what it is i'm just gonna tell them it's fried fish see what they think about it i'm telling you this is my favorite fish i'm not trying i don't care if you eat grinnell you can throw them all back just don't throw them on the bank and let them die it's a native fish it deserves some more respect than that but if you're wanting to have a fish fry I want you to try Grinnell, I'm telling you. 
it don't get no better than this. And this is a big one, you know. Supposedly, a lot of people say the bigger a fish gets, the worse it tastes. And uh, that's not the case with Grinnell. And this is a 10 and a half pounds, the biggest one I've ate. I, the last one I ate was like four or five pounds. The one before that was eight and a half. I will, my next video will be starting on my next boat build. Uh, it's been a lot of rain here. My next boat build is going to be outside and it's going to be a lot shorter one. It's probably going to be maybe five or six episodes unless I run into some snags. And it's going to be a little bit shorter. Yeah, but I'm kind of excited about it. It's going to be a little bit different. Not to mention, I've been enjoying this little break from <laughs> building boats. So I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you on the next one. Building another boat.